uh, try to ask them as soon as possible not to miss something. This presentation is not really uh, long and it will not take really much time and it doesn't contain super much information. Uh, it's just general uh, um, statements about mentoring and about how we understand it and what mistakes we usually do. Uh, I didn't have really much time uh, to uh, describe my entire experience in it and uh, different uh, uh, my my own mistakes, but I will uh, try to uh, add my own uh, uh, different situations from my own experience as much as possible uh, to describe some myths. So I uh, there are a, a set of resources I described in the end of this presentation. Uh, you can uh, go there, visit these web pages, and uh, to download these uh, articles and see that. Uh, uh, there is not really uh, much uh, new about what I'm uh, going to tell you right now because much of this information I took from there. So to start with, uh, I just want to add a quick introduction. So my name is Yuri and I was asked to prepare uh, some uh, presentation for development community. Uh, I didn't want to uh, tell you much about different uh, tools uh, or uh, different uh, approaches. Uh, but there is one thing that I actually can see almost every day and I see these mistakes and I usually, uh, usually these mistakes occur to me and they are related to mentoring. So very often when I have, when I have a talk uh, uh, with some senior guys, uh, they usually like to, it's, it can be some interview or something, and they usually like to mention that they are, they are good mentors. So to my question, why, why do they think, think so? They say that, you know, I train newcomers, and uh, uh, I, when I ask, do you think it's, don't you think it's your duty? So you are a team lead or you're a senior developer and newcomers come, a newcomer comes and you have to help them, you have to involve them to the process, they say, no, you know, I don't have to do that. Nobody asked me to do that. Uh, but uh, I was kind enough to help them and pass my knowledge. And I spent really much time. I could spend this time for any tasks, but I was uh, kind hearted and mm -hmm. I just uh, helped them. Right. So when my, I, after that, I give the second question. It's who do you think is, in, is a mentor? Right. And the answer is usually the same. So uh, is the older developer that is counseling a young upstart and uh, who gives advices on his career and uh, he gives advices how to navigate the world of work, what to do to get ahead. And actually, we should agree with that. So it is OK. Actually, it was OK a few decades ago. Right now, I think uh, Together with the misunderstanding of mentoring itself, we try to use obsolete definitions so that slowly turned into myths together with the uh, evolution of today's world. So, you know, when I started to uh, study this problem, I tried to write down the most invalid statements about mentoring. And uh, fortunately, and uh, you know, several minutes, I tried to Google it and found out that uh, there are so many materials and resources about it. I was even a bit afraid and I thought that it's impossible to get to the heart of this problem. But after some investigation and exploration, I uh, could group these issues to 10 main uh, uh, myths that uh, I will uh, tell you about today. So first of all, uh, let's agree that Today we will speak about informal mentoring. So there are two kinds of mentoring, it's informal and formal. And formal is a kind of uh, uh, part of global company process. So there are corresponding de uh, departments, uh, training plans, materials, and uh, there are special mentoring employees. So it's well organized and tracked. Informal, that's the stuff that we deal with every day. It's like an ad hoc help. So. Uh, when we speak about informal mentoring, it means that there is uh, some uh, mentee, the guy that uh, needs help, that needs uh, somebody to help him to improve himself. He knows what he's missing and uh, he asks some guy to help him. And this uh, second guy uh, called a mentor. So uh, mentor is like a protege of the mentee. 
And speaking about the informal mentoring, uh, there are yes seven items that uh, differentiate them from the formal one. So the first thing is goal, uh, goals unspecified. There is no a specific goal of uh, a specific mentoring session. So when a mentee uh, needs some help, he usually doesn't know exactly what he needs. He needs, he knows the direction, he knows the area of acknowledgement and uh, the uh, duty of mentor is uh, to help him to get the knowledge there, also uh, giving him also some uh, related knowledge and different advices. Also, as we don't have, uh, we don't know the goals, we don't have any, we don't know any out, we can't count any outcomes of it. So uh, sometimes uh, when uh, after the successful uh, end of uh, relation between mentor, mentor and the mentee, uh, mentee can even May, may get even more information that he needed, even more knowledge, and it's even better. Sometimes he can still feel the lack of it, so he wants just to uh, end the this relation with the uh, mentor. So it, it depends, but usually these outcomes are not tracked, as they usually are tracked during the formal, formal mentoring, there, where there are different formulas and tests and uh, even exams. Uh, Access is usually limited to the training materials. It means that actually there are no any training materials. So when you need some information, you call directly uh, the mentor. So mentor says, okay, here I am. Uh, I know I, uh, I can help. And here is an answer. And let's uh, talk about what you, what you need to know. Uh, mentors and mentor self-select. This is very, very important item here. So. Uh, usually, when somebody assigns a mentor to the mentoree, it's not uh, uh, it's not a good start for this mentoring process. Mentoree should uh, feel uh, wh whom he needs. Of course, somebody you can give advices to him. You can say, okay, here is the senior guy; he can help you. But usually, mentorees uh, uh, select uh, that uh, from whom they want to get uh, this help based on their uh, relationship with them, uh, based on uh, their uh, target, what they need to know, uh, how they need this to uh, be learned, etc. And uh, usually mentoring lasts a long time. Long time means uh, uh, there, there are even some numbers, like from uh, nine months uh, to, uh, to a year. So it's actually a long time. Why so? Because uh, a mentoring uh, requires some uh, relations, rela relations. It's not just uh, when you have a task and you uh, get it done, you complete it, and that's all. Uh, for mentor to give the best advices and uh, to give the best feedback, mentor should know should know much about the mentee uh, to uh, make the mentee uh, speak about not only the. Uh, just the uh, issues, but also about the cause of the issue, about their feelings, uh, what they think about it, and uh, what they think about uh, your relationship with them. Uh, so it's just a bit more than just a simple work. Uh, as I said, there are no official training supports there. There are no, uh, uh, for example, specific uh, uh, trainings for mentors or mentors. Everything just uh, happens because it happens. You can. Uh, uh, just think about yourself. I think all of you have ever uh, mentored anybody or well mentored by somebody. And uh, think about how it started, right? So, of course, mentor can uh, point you to some uh, uh, resources, to some books, some links, but uh, usually it's just the general uh, resources that, uh, that can be... Uh, got by anybody, right? And the main thing here also that organization benefits indirectly. So during the formal uh, mentoring, uh, as I said, is a part of company process. So company uh, can count the goals, it can count the outcomes, and it can count uh, how it can win and what benefits it can bring uh, during some uh, mentoring session. During the informal mentoring, uh, of course, uh, the level of the mentoree and what is really interesting that also the level of the mentor increases uh, and of course organization wins there. So it was just a, some uh, introduction. Let's already start with the myths. 
So the first one uh, is that everybody thinks that mentoring and coaching are essentially the, the same. The fact is they are two different things. But I think that it's the myth that just won't die. So uh, there are two differentiators of coach, coaching and mentoring. Uh, the first is that coaching is task-oriented, but mentoring is relationship-oriented. So uh, during the coaching, the focus is on concrete issues, but during the, me uh, the mentoring, it seeks to provide a safe environment where the mentor shares whatever issues affect his or her professional and uh, personal success. We can give a simple sample. So, for example, you have a project manager. And project manager sees that uh, there is a cool uh, junior developer and this developer, uh, he says that he will be a good uh, team leader. So he finds, he finds another guy, like successful team lead, and says, you know, here is the junior guy, he will be your mentee, please learn him to be a leader. So uh, this team lead uh, uh, searches for some special materials, resources, uh, uh, talks to this guy, and on a daily basis uh, speaks, about, uh, speaks uh, uh, about this with P uh, project manager, and also project manager tracks this, gives uh, the advices. So it, it is actually a coaching, so because there is a task, there is a task to increase the leading abilities. There are corresponding persons, and uh, uh, the process is completely tracked by the direct manager. If the process, process is tracked by the direct manager, that's already a uh, uh, thing to think about uh, when speaking about the mentoring. But during the mentoring, project managers still can see that uh, there is a guy that uh, has good leading uh, uh, abilities, but uh, they need to be developed. So he finds a team lead and says, you know, here is a guy, uh, talk to him, uh, tell him that uh, he can be a good team lead and uh, you can start working on this. And they start working and project manager uh, is, uh, is aware of this process, but he's not involved to it. So he knows that uh, the guy uh, is being uh, mentored uh, by, but uh, he uh, doesn't add any uh, in, uh, include any involvement. He doesn't uh, uh, give his own advices. And uh, day by day, uh, in a half of a year, in a year, uh, there will be the result. So this is how the coach, coaching and mentoring uh, uh, differentiate are differentiated. By the second uh, differentiator is that coaching is short term and mentoring is always a long term. So during the coaching, a coach can successfully be involved with the coach for a short period, maybe even just a few sessions, because there is a specific task that should be fixed. But uh, a mentoring, as I said, it's uh, it just uh, something more than just uh, uh, development or uh, issue resolution. It's a, a thing of trust and relationship. So the second myth is that uh, the mentor owns and manages the partnership. The fact is that successful partnerships are owned and managed by the mentee. So the mentor is uh, responsible for finding time to meet with his or her mentor. And mentee should prepare for each meeting with the agenda and questions uh, for the mentor. So actually the mentee is the key person here and mentee is responsible for scheduling the meetings and preparing ahead of time. So uh, we can just uh, add one more thing here that I think before that, before our call you thought and I thought and that uh, during the mentoring process, the main uh, guy is the mentor. So the mentor decides who who he wants to mentor and uh, how he wants to organize this process, how he wants to schedule the meetings. But actually, that's the thing of mentee. And uh, you as a mentor just have to uh, support this guy. You have to uh, find time for him and have to discuss your uh, future schedules, uh, uh, contracts, and uh, uh, tasks. So the second myth, the third myth is that uh, mentoring is something a mentor does to a mentee. Yes, yeah, so mentoring arises out of an effective relationship between two people. And both the mentee and mentor have a mutual commitment to build the partnerships, uh, partnership in order to meet the mentee's goal. Uh, also, mentoring partnerships are always as perfect match. But, you know, for example, 
if things are not working out, you can both respectfully agree to discontinue the relationship. So that's not a problem. And also, this should not reflect negatively on either person. So also, it depends on the contract. I remember from uh, my experience that uh, I thought, okay, I'm a mentor, here is a guy, and I, try, I, I started to work with him. I didn't even ask him uh, how, how he sees our uh, partnership. So I started to give him uh, different tasks. I started to give him different uh, literature, but actually I didn't ask him uh, how he wants to work and what he wants to listen. So at some point of time, he says, you know, I'm not interested in this. I'm, I'm not interested in uh, what you give to me. And uh, I, I feel that there is a, a bit pressure from your side. So I imagine it won't be like this. So he said, you know, uh, I think uh, I don't like this project. But actually, the problem was not in the project. Actually, it was in a mentor or a, in me. So everything you have to do, uh, you have to... Uh, begin a contract at the, uh, to start a contract be, uh, at the beginning of this mentoring so you have uh, to schedule a talk with the mentee and specify uh, what how you want to work if he wants just a technical uh, discussions or he wants uh, some private discussions maybe he wants uh, more friendship and you have to organize different uh, uh, parties and team buildings uh, etc and uh, uh, you will st talk to him in more unofficial uh, uh, space, but uh, in any case, uh, everybody should be on the pa uh, on the same page. And uh, in the end, if uh, somebody see that this is not what you agreed uh, on at the beginning of the project, there is no problem. You just uh, uh, discontinue the relationship, and there should be no any uh, uh, future negative. Uh, uh, relation to the protege. And the next myth is that uh, mentoring is time consuming. So, uh, you know, when you develop an agenda, clear goals and uh, level of confidentiality, uh, it just forms a meeting schedule. So you see that mentoring, it, it should train uh, for the mentor, it should train time management skills. That's why mentoring is usually uh, has benefits not only to mentee and to a mentor. So you will think about the, your uh, when you have a schedule, when you see that this schedule doesn't uh, overlap with other your activities and uh, you don't waste your time. And the main thing that you will not waste the time of the mentee because he needs this time even more because he learns more. Uh, this is how this should work, and it shouldn't take uh, more time than it needs to take. So if you read the fact, mentoring is a partnership, and like any type of relationship, it requires dedicated time. The main idea here is dedicated. So if it is scheduled, if it is, if it has clear goals, uh, uh, it, it is okay. Uh, the second, the uh, sixth myth is that mentoring partnerships last, last a lifetime. So mentoring partnerships, uh, they should end when they are not needed anymore. Don't think about mentoring like the stuff that usually uh, takes forever. And for example, if you're a, a tech lead or a senior developer and there is some uh, junior guy in your team, that means that you will mentor him all the time. No, you will not mentor him. You will give him the advices according to the project needs and it will be more like coaching. He asks you and you answer. But a mentor is a guy with the clear goals to uh, improve some uh, abilities and areas of the mentee per his request or per his need. If you uh, get to this point, if you uh, manage to fix these issues, it means that your uh, current mentoring session is complete and you can agree on continuing it, improving some more skills, or you can agree on ending it. Uh, myth number seven is mentoring is based on chemistry. Uh, it's, you know, it's it's very special thing because usually people think that if uh, there, are, there is special relationship between mentoring and the mentor, and uh, they should be like the best friends, but uh, Effective mentoring partnership is a relationship. 
built on mutual respect, trust, and honesty. So the key uh, term here is a partnership. So is if it is according to your contract, is satisfied. So if you decided that it should be just technical discussion and technical level of communication, that's it. You don't need to be like super best friends and uh, nothing super special. Uh, the relationships should between be, uh, should exist between both of you. Uh, the eighth myth is that mentors are many years older than the mentee. So in today's world, usually young people are really uh, gifted, and uh, they if they are interested in something, they have really many resources. They have really many places where to learn it. So sometimes in different areas, young people are even can be even uh, smarter and more experienced than the old guys or older older developers. So it shouldn't depend on age, but usually it depends. So according to my experience, uh, older guys don't like when somebody talks to them, uh, just uh, to uh, telling them that they do something wrong and uh, uh, they are, it, it's like an obsolete technology and there is a newer one, etc. So uh, also they get this information with more uh, criticism. So it's really hard to prove them something. And that's a problem. So if we are uh, talking about the mentoring, we should uh, know that Everything, uh, except the technical space, uh, worth nothing. So uh, if, we, if we talk to some guy and he uh, tells you really uh, some good technical uh, information that, that you really need, uh, you, you shouldn't care about his age, about his uh, approach and what he says, because he really uh, tells you uh, good stuff. So. Mentors should be selected based on their experience. You should uh, uh, count on their knowledge and skills and ability to share what they know. So some of these uh, qualities come with age, but uh, it's not always. Uh, and the myth number nine is that mentoring meetings must be face to face. And also in, in today's world, we have Skype, we have email, we have telephone. So uh, once a solid foundation for the partnership is established, there is no problem with any other communication. Of course, with face-to-face -face meetings, you have uh, some uh, uh, visual and verbal uh, rela relation. But uh, again, if you uh, have a contract and you uh, specify that it's okay uh, for your needs uh, to discuss any problems uh, uh, via the phone, it shouldn't be a problem. So don't think that if you talk to somebody by phone, it's not even a mentoring. And the last one, finally, is that you need only one mentor at a time. There is a cool uh, term called um, mentoring network. It means that you can have even uh, many uh, mentors because uh, uh, there are different areas that you want to improve. And that's very good because you have different mentors. They are of different skills and of different areas of work. Sometimes during the mentoring, uh, you uh, really get to know much information about their own projects, their own experience, their own issues. So in future, when you have some troubles or you, when you have some uh, problems uh, with your project or some similar project, uh, you already know uh, where you can ask about it and you will already know about some pros and cons uh, that you discussed with your mentor. Uh, before. Uh, so the idea, the idea of this presentation is uh, that uh, everybody get the benefits uh, for the mentees. Right now the screen is being shared so you can read about it, but uh, some main items here uh, that uh, for the mentees, the main uh, benefit is uh, increased self-awareness and self-discipline because there is also some time uh, management, there will be also some uh, tasks uh, and resources from the uh, mentor that also will be tracked. Uh, it's uh, support in the transition to a new role or location. So every time when you find a new project, you always try to search uh, for a, a guy that will help you with the relocation, that will help you to uh, 
get to new to to your new uh, location and role. And also, it's a positive and constructive feedback on professional and personal development area. So you every all the time you know where to ask, and you know that there are guys that can listen to you. Speaking about the benefits for mentors, you see that uh, there are also seven ones, but I think it's even more. So don't think that uh, from the mentoring on the mentees win. Uh, for mentors, uh, there is a, of course, there is a satisfaction from helping others and seeing them progress, but also uh, it is an opportunity to develop and practice management skills and also time management skills. So it's like you have uh, uh, the guy uh, that you are, uh, responsible for so you're responsible that uh, the knowledge that you give to him uh, it should uh, give a benefit for uh, for him so you should see that he wins and if you see that he wins uh, it means that you win together with him and of course uh, the same one here is expanded network uh, networking opportunities someday this uh, uh, mentory will become a professional uh, developer and maybe I mean, uh, professionalist in uh, his area, and maybe one day you already know where you can ask uh, for advices. So the conclusion, the conclusion is uh, very simple. So all kinds of false perceptions uh, exist about mentoring, mostly based on fantasizing rather than reflecting on personal experience. So try more, gain more experience, try to avoid issues we described today, and get all the benefits of being the mentor or a mentee, so you decide. And if you have any questions, please let me know because today's presentation was really uh, verbal. I didn't add even any images and I didn't want to make it too long because this is not a really hard stuff to discuss, uh, just to get the main idea. So if you have any questions or uh, some uh, samples uh, from your life that you want to discuss, feel free. Uh, Yuri, Igor Fisenka speaking. Thanks a lot for presentation. Very interesting. Right. And, okay. So, uh, if no any questions, here are the resources. You can look through them. As I said, you will not find uh, something new, uh, but it may be a good start if you want uh, to make the mentoring in the right way. Yuri, so, thank you very much. I hope. Yuri, uh, I Yuri had a uh, question. From this presentation. So, if at least it's the, uh, I listed at least. Yuri. items that were okay for you. I think Do that's you hear really me? amazing. Yuri. Thank you all. Thank you, Hanya, for the opportunity. <laughs> have, have everybody a good day. Uh, okay, thank you, Yuri. Okay, guys, uh, I think Yuri d uh, didn't hear us. I don't know what's wrong with uh, his uh, uh, sound. I'll try to type him. Type him. Ah, you don't have. Uh, don't have. Okay. okay, guys, I think I can hear you now. Johanna? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, so I, I, I uh, mentioned in the beginning of this call that I will talk by Skype and by phone, but I will get the questions only by phone, not to mix everything up together. Uh, uh, we're trying to use only uh, uh, Skype uh, in um, since uh, when you turn on Skype and phone connection, sometimes it's uh, duplicates each other and uh, make some noise mm -hmm. did you get me 
Yeah. I think uh, Igor has a question. Yeah. Yeah. True. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Yuri, thanks a lot for presentation. Very interesting. Uh, and uh, I have a question, maybe about approach. I don't know how we can call this um, reverse mentoring when uh, mentee and mentor uh, maybe change uh, him places and uh, mentor uh, going uh, to be mentee and mentee reverse is true, going uh, to be mentor for some period of time. Is it good practice or not? Uh, so, if you feel that mentor can satisfy the mentee's needs, why not? So, mentor shouldn't be the direct uh, coach or the direct manager of the mentee, so it shouldn't depend on any hierarchy or uh, any other type of uh, 